There's a little note from Ken here for you. Hi, Naomi. I absolutely loved this book. I am a middle-aged man who, 10 years ago, became a stepfather to two amazing young women. Since then, I totally fall for any story with even a touch of a heartfelt parent-slash-child theme, and Spinning Silver did not disappoint. For my girls, I love this story about women that are clever and strong and fearless who decide to go out and change their own destinies. I felt Wanda's thoughts about not knowing she was strong enough until after she had done the things she did was so powerful. For myself, it was a breath of fresh air to see the princesses saving the princes, completely opposite to, of the countless fairy tales I grew up with. Uh, for once I got to imagine, maybe one day my princess will swoop down and rescue me from my demons and my warm uh, and warm my cold heart. So my question to you, when you write, are there messages such as these in your thoughts when you set up a story? Are you hoping to elicit certain emotions and thoughts or create specific themes that you hope the readers will really have to think about? Or is it more of this Ice Lord dude idea seems really cool and maybe I can tell an interesting story about him? I would say neither. I am primarily a discovery writer, but I generally find as a discovery writer is what I'm always trying to do when I when I write, which is one of the reasons that I like to write fantasy, is I'm always trying to build the world and the characters together. And together, they generate the plot for me. What I generally find is when I do that, when I sort of, and what I mean by that is I start with the first line. You know, I start with in this case, there was the line of, you know, the, I know the story. This is the story they tell, right? Uh, and it's it's sort of setting up that idea of Rumpelstiltskin being in this world. Mm. And then my question becomes, all right, who is this? Who's speaking to me? Who is this character? What's the world that she lives in? And the idea that she was the moneylender's daughter started to build. And then the Stark came in fairly, fairly quickly into the story. And... You know, I started building this world of this country that was very deliberately a place where there were multiple people under siege, right? So Miriam and her family and the Jewish community are under siege this world in a sense, right? But their own country, Lithvas, is itself under siege by the Staric on one side, by these other nations sort of hinted at on the fringes on the other, you know, that they're caught between that it's it's sort of they themselves are are pressed you know the people in in miriam's village are themselves you know they they don't they're not just doing it out of malice they're they're themselves hungry it, it costs them to pay back the money and so that whole that sense and that is very much a sense of what of coming from my father's experience right when i'm building those kinds of things in a story right i, I tend to identify them slightly after I start putting them in, mm -hmm. but then I I try to lean into those things as soon as I spot them. I'm like, right, this is what's happening. And really by following the truth of the characters in a situation and by remaining consistent to the world that I've been building so far, except when I deliberately am like, no, I'm going to change this element. And then I go back and revise whether it's changing what a character's behavior has been or changing an aspect of the world. When I've done that, I'm finding that themes reveal themselves to me. Mm. And what happens is I write and at the end of the story, quickly I finish this like, oh, what this book is about. And I go back and I revise it. But that's a little bit of a of an illusion because what's actually happening is I'm performing that process of revision throughout at stages, sort of see where what the idea is. And that almost always turns out to be something that I've been thinking about, something that's been resonating with me. So for instance, as I was saying, uprooted, I did not deliberately set out to write the story of my family. It got a tenth and word in before my first person narrator's name was revealed to me. Whoa. And I had somebody, yes, I did not know that her name was Agnieszka for quite a long time. And then I wrote it the first time in my first draft. I was about 1,000 words in. And as soon as I said Yeshka, I, I, somebody called her that as a nickname. I was like, oh, her name's Agnieszka. She's Pol This is Poland. Uh, now I know what I'm doing. Wow. Right? And then obviously I went back and revised you know, the first, and then I went in and, and fixed the first 10,000 words so that all was there so that all made sense wow. and that all yes and that's that's how I work so I never I don't sit down and say here's the theme of this book here's the story that I'm telling because I generally find that if I were to do that I would weight down 
my story. I don't want to know that at the start. I need to just let the characters come alive and start doing things in the world and revealing the world itself to me. And that that process is what I need to have happen for a while before before I can figure out what it is I want to say and what I care about. That is fascinating. It sounds like you're just going through quite a few revisions though. How long does the process take? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it takes me really I a bad year to write a book, but I tend, it's hard for me to describe it because I am a, I'm very much a feast or famine person mm -hmm. when right. I'm writing. I'm writing very quickly. Um, I, I write thousands of words in a day uh, when I'm, I'm going. And that is, that's because when I'm not writing, a lot of work is going on in the back of my head that by the time I sit down, suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm opening the floodgates and the, the word coming. I don't really notice that the process of revision is just baked into the writing for me. I'm just constantly revising as I go. I just think it's so fascinating because usually when you're starting, it's like, all right, who is it? Who is it? And you're like, name's not important. Let's go. <laughs> I just think that that's wonderful.